Okay, so there are basically two types of control uh, that you can have. One is open loop and one is closed loop. Okay, so this is one way of classifying the type of control system. And uh, if you look at this slide here, it will actually give you a very quick, um, at one very quick glance, you will definitely see what is the difference between your open loop and closed loop. Okay, of course, in this case, there is a feedback. Uh, to the controller. Okay, so remember, uh, in control system, in a control system, we uh, usually will have a desired state and an actual state that uh, is the output after going through the control system. Okay, so the control system actually consists of your controller and your plant. And in this case, for open loop situation, uh, your desired state will map over to your actual state after going through the controller as well as the uh, plant. So let's take a very quick uh, example on uh, open loop. So one of this example is your um, heater, water heater. So this is actually a water heater uh, that doesn't have any uh, thermal sensing capability. So it's not taking the temperature. When you put this into your boiler, or rather your water, you will just heat out this water, okay, until you uh, either switch off the power or you uh, remove this uh, rod from your water. So in such a case, uh, there is actually no feedback. It will keep uh, heating up. And what you are going through is actually a desired, uh, perhaps your power or even your time, uh, desired state. Oh, sorry. In this case, you are trying to uh, boil the water. So you hope that the water will actually uh, go up to 100 degree. Okay. And it will actually go through uh, the controller, uh, in fact, the entire control system, uh, converting your electrical power to your thermal energy. And the uh, energy will actually boil the water and eventually uh, come out to your actual state. So if we take a look at a water heater, okay, this is a water heater system. Um, there are actually sensors uh, within the system to keep track of the temperature of the water. So it will control that temperature at a constant value, or rather it will attempt to control uh, the actual state to be the same as the desirable uh, state. Okay, so it is through sensors that uh, we are actually able to feedback this measurement here um, to produce the command that will eventually minimize the error so that the uh, temperature will stay constant. Okay, so this is your closed loop system. Now let's take a comparison uh, between your open and your closed loop and looking at uh, various uh, criteria like cost, design, accuracy, and reliability. So we see that uh, with open loop control, it will actually require uh, no sensor most of the time. And uh, this will actually uh, make the cost more economical. Uh, on the other hand, if you are doing a closed loop system, uh, there's a need to ha have your sensor and all the measurement you need that is required and sometimes even the computational uh, capability. So this is actually expensive. And if you look at the design, of course, having open loop design is straightforward. You don't need to worry about where to place your sensor, whether you can calibrate your sensor uh, accurately, uh, things like that. So the design is definitely simpler in the case of open loop, but it gets complicated when you're uh, talking about a closed loop. You need to know how you uh, calibrate the sensor uh, reading 
to minimize the error and how you can actually uh, place your sensor in the right position to acquire the right thing. So sometimes uh, giving the wrong feedback is actually worse than not giving any feedback. Okay, so this can be a minus point if it is not designed correctly. And if we look at accuracy, most of the time, uh, if you design it correctly, of course, your closed loop system will be more accurate. In a way, it is able to see what is happening in the real world or real environment and feedback this to your controller so that your controller can actually do the necessary correction. So uh, it will be closer to your desired uh, state. And that is why accuracy is actually better in the case of closed loop. So uh, in the case of open loop, it's like having a blind system. Uh, when you tell the system to do something, it will just try to attempt and doesn't care about what is really going on in the real life. Okay, so this can be erroneous. And when we talk about uh, disturbance from the environment, it will actually make uh, your open loop system a lot less reliable. Okay, because it doesn't know what is happening, it's blind to the surrounding. Uh, it is only uh, executing the command or the uh, input that you uh, send in. So it can be quite reliable, uh, sorry, quite unreliable. Uh, in this case, your closed loop uh, system will have the potential of achieving a more reliable uh, output. Okay. So uh, just a very quick concept check uh, when you look at this uh, question here. Imagine that you are controlling the position of a mass M. Okay, so in this case, you have two mass M by these two uh, control system. Okay, one is a robot arm because one is a, a positioning stage or we call this a translating uh, stage. Okay, so uh, which mechanism uh, will actually uh, be more suitable uh, with your open loop control. So if you look at this too, uh, try to think about this. So in fact, uh, this question is like asking yourself, uh, when do you actually need open loop and in what situation uh, would you require closed loop or feedback? To make the system more accurate and reliable okay so i will leave you to think about this for a while because it will actually lead to uh, the next discussion so uh, i will see you in the next uh, video segment